Hey everyone, rather go here and here. Welcome to Crusader Kings 2 Holy Fury. Today we're going to be doing a sort of Suomanesco speedrun. We're going to be playing on totally normal rules, but Shattered Retreat is off because I just really dislike that mechanic. First of all, you need to reroll a couple of times because you need to get a character that has decent martial, doesn't need to be as high as 15, and doesn't have Zealous. Because you'll notice we aren't actually Suomanesco, we're Slavic, and we need to convert at some point. We're also setting our focus to theology because that will help us get the requisite 750 piety to convert to Suomanesco. Sorry, to reform Suomanesco. Now, you also need three of the five holy sites, and we'll be taking these three on the left here. To convert to Sumanesco, we're actually going to conquer that northern holy site with the conquest cast as well, because right now we're just sort of, you know, Slavic. And once we have that, we can make it our capital, allowing us to convert to the local religion, which is Sumanesco. And we also need 50% moral authority for Sumanesco, it's currently 35, and we'll get into the remaining 50% much later. Just now, you can see me going through and invite people by court. I bribe and hire a siege leader with ridiculous martial. It's going to speed up the run a lot. You really want to look for siege leaders and organizers at the start of the game. I also invite pretty much any men that will come to my court because I don't have enough people in my court for commanders, take three strong concubines, and just marry some random girl from a great house who has the highest stewardship of all the available candidates. But I'm doing this so that I can have higher domain size without actually losing prestige for taking a shit marriage. Now, I also immediately plot to kill my brother because I am his heir and he's a triple count. His land's marginally better than mine, so this will increase my military power, but I'll be at my domain cap, so it's not actually as important as it seems like it might be. After this, I declare my once-per-lifetime subjugation war against the holy site to our west, and I declare a conquest war against Ladiga. And the reason I'm not taking an ambition to become king right now is because if I became king of Novgorod, it would stop me from moving my capital. And it simply would require an additional war if I became king now rather than later. Here you can see me just going through and setting up my commanders and counselors. It's pretty straightforward. Highest marshal that can actually lead his commanders, all of my counselors that can generate troops do. And frankly, spymaster and chancellor don't matter at all, but I pretend they do and set them to statecraft and spying like I always do. Raise all my levies and start going to Ladiga. And here we're just going to expand with all of the people I've invited in my court, married, taken as concubines, and shortly I'll assign them as commanders and actually go to war. I take the gold here because I don't actually end up needing it, but if you do run out of gold in any sort of speed run, the run basically ends, because you can't declare war while bankrupt, and that's just months to years lost as a tribal society. And here I'm like grossly over planning this. I could let them walk in without commanders and they'd win by landslide. Actually bothering to assign commanders to each individual army is way more micro than you need to actually use on this. And since this siege is pretty much going to be a walkover, now is a decent time to mention this. I'm not actually trying to get the fastest time possible. I'm trying to show, like, generally good strats in very good times, but after a point, you have to just reset runs constantly to hire an organizer and a siege leader at the start of the run. You need to assassinate your family member, but he needs to get assassinated at exactly the right point in time so that you get his levies. It's a nightmare. And this is not him getting assassinated at the right moment in time. I would much prefer him getting assassinated later on, but instead I actually have to manage his land now. If he were to get assassinated in about a year and a half, I'd actually be able to raise all of his levies for the biggest series of wars that I have, but now since I'm over my domain cap, I'm going to have to give it away, otherwise the levy penalties it would incur would cause me to actually lose troops, not gain them. And this holy site really doesn't stand much of a chance. The only reason I'm coming to it now is because if I don't, it's very likely to get conquered. A lot of the RNG in this run is that other people can conquer these two holy sites that we immediately go for, and if they do, it wastes a lot of time, makes your wars longer, it's basically a reset condition, because you can end up wasting, like, nearly a full year, and this whole run's only about five years long. And here, this is one of the things where I've just played the start of this enough that I know exactly how it works. Eventually, he will send his army around while you're sieging this. And just like how you can get 100% war score against Ladiga with only one battle and one siege, you can do much the same here. You'll see him come out of Fog of War into my land in a second, and I just wait for him to lock, ambush him when he does. And that's going to be the war. The AI is fairly predictable, and they've got lower troop counts than you, so even without playing this a lot, you should be able to really consistently win all of these wars. Hilariously, because of the central location and relative military power of Novgorod, it's way easier to reform Suomanesco as Novgorod than any other faction, which is just awkward since they're also not Suomanesco, but oh well. So, now that I've conquered Kaki Salmi, and that can't be all it's pronounced, but that's what we're going with, we're going to set it as our capital. By setting our capital to be a Suomanesco region, we're able to convert to that religion. 
Now, we don't have the ability to do that yet because we need 500 prestige. To that end, we make Become King of Finland our ambition, which gives us access to Subjugation Wars again. These Subjugation Wars will give us 100 prestige and piety every time we win one. After these two Subjugations, we'll have 500 prestige, allowing us to convert to the local religion, which will in turn give us 250 piety, putting us at almost 750 piety after the Subjugation Wars have finished. Now, that handles everything but Moral Authority, which we'll get to later. For now, we have some wars to win. And these wars should basically be walkovers, because we are tremendously more advanced than these Finnish counties. We're also more numerous than them, and we have better generals than them. We pretty much have everything going for us at this point, we're just trying to hit requisites. The big bottleneck for us in this case is going to be Moral Authority, simply because there's no quick way for the Suomenesco to get Moral Authority. And here you can see that we just outnumber them tremendously, and the only real difficulty is sieging all of their land down, just because there's enough of it that they're able to maneuver around us and start conquering our capital, which is unfortunate, but we have to make our capital in this region, nothing else actually gives us the ability to convert to Sumanusco. So our war score is going to be a bit lower than it normally would, but we can still get through this just fine. There's a little bit more being sieged and running around than we would like, it's not as fast as it possibly could be, but it's still pretty much a one-sided war. There's just the illusion of losses on our side because they're sieging out our capital. The war score makes it seem much closer than it really is. Like, minus 6% here is hilarious. Sieging our capital is worth so much, but they haven't actually done anything. And if we were a couple of days faster, we'd have actually gotten all of their land siege and been able to save a lot of time on that front. Unfortunately, we have to backtrack and beat down their army, re-siege this county. And I say re-siege, but their levies are gone, so we can just assault it twice. It's not remotely as long as the first time. And that's the first of our subjugation wars done. These subjugation words really are pretty one-sided. At this point, we've done the hard part of the run. We're just dotting our I's and crossing our T's, hitting all the check marks, making sure that everything is actually finished. And you can see that the final subjugation war is actually already being conquered by Sweden, but that doesn't actually matter. It's just a conquest war. You can't both subjugate the same guy at the same time because you're essentially contesting the same title. So even if I weren't to get to this county first, when he gets this county, it would go to 100%, his war would end, he would take Suomi, and then I'd siege this down and take the other county, because all that matters is that I win the war, I don't actually care about the land. In this case, I get Suomi, but it really doesn't matter. So with my subjugation wars done, I start preparing to do some other stuff. First, I split up my armies so that I can actually disband the ones that have regrown during this war. Remember, I gave away some of my counties, so if I disbanded my whole army, some of these guys wouldn't be re-raisable. And you'll see me moving all of these to my former capital. The reason for that is I'm expecting to have to put down a couple of revolts here, because I don't actually have the ability to ask for conversion or revoke titles right now. So to get rid of the priest here, the only thing I can do is just imprison and execute them over and over until it randomly generates a Suomenesco priest. I get lucky here, and the first person who comes up is actually Suomenesco, but you could theoretically go through dozens of these guys and they would just all be slavic and just have to waste so much piety. Now, here we're just moving south to pillage these temples for our remaining moral authority. We have 48% moral authority currently. We started at 35, we gained 10 for controlling the Salt Sea, and we gained 3% because a ruler converted to Manesco. Us. And here I'm a little bit sloppy. I probably lose a month or so because I'm trying to save my army instead of just going to the next temple. Definitely the wrong call there, but again, I really only care about getting moderately fast times and showing the strategy, not actually doing it as quickly as physically possible. Speedruns are really fun when you're learning them, and really unfun when you're trying to get perfect times. And honestly, at this point, I thought I had three temples to siege. I didn't realize that I was just going to finish it here. I was really, really surprised when this assault popped up the icon for Convert Religion. Also, we got a fancy plus two axe, which I guess is nice. So, whenever you reform a religion, it always keeps some characteristics and has a unique doctrine. The unique characteristics that are kept when you convert to Suomenesco are decisions involving patron deities and ancestor worship. We'll get to those in a couple of seconds. And the unique doctrine is the survivors of Ukka, which is essentially just resistant to proselytizing plus stability. Now, whenever you reform one of the pagan religions, you'll get a crown that gives plus 0.4 monthly prestige, plus 0.7 monthly piety, and plus 10 tribal vassal opinion. The Tiatajan crown for the Suomenescos gives plus 2 intrigue and stewardship, which is one of the better combinations of stat modifiers that you could get, because both of those are really important. Okay, so I may have sacrificed all the heathens in my jail to our new reindeer gods, don't worry too much about that. I've also made the Sacred Woods our primary title, and I really just enjoy the name and color of it. I slightly prefer the Filcret, but this is still pretty badass. And these are the decisions that you hold over. The Hold Ukan Juha Festival is a lot like the Tribal Festival, except even better, and they aren't mutually exclusive. You can run both of them. Worship the Ancestors we'll get to in a while, and Pick Patron Deity is just plus two and one stat minus one another. It's good, but it's not particularly amazing. 
I know that the other two are just good. I'm not actually sure if uh, Worship the Ancestors is good. I don't know what the average result of it is because there's a lot of variants. Here you can see that the festival that the Suomanesco keep is just really good. It gives you a lot of reputation with your vassals, and when you finish it, you get 100 prestige and piety. And in the case of this video, the patron deity was great. I get 20% levy size, but I don't know how good it actually is on average. Anyway, that's the Suomanesco reformed in just under five years and all of their mechanics. This has been Rather Incoherent. I hope you've had a good time. Like, comment, subscribe, all that shilly channel growth nonsense. I'll see you around.